Sometimes in your power apps, you want to get people's notifications, right? You want to be able to send them an update on here, their phone, their tablet, or even their watch. And so instead of sending them emails or sending them a Teams messages, what we're going to talk about today is power apps notifications. This is where you can actually do a pop-up that shows up in their mobile notifications. The idea there is that we could use it to send them a message or maybe send them a reminder to fill out their timesheet or something like that. Or it could be to directly notify them to say, hey, look at this specific work order for me. So what we're going to do today is we're going to work through how all that works and get that going so you can add it to your apps. Sound fun? Then let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so I made a quick app to demo this. It's got my work orders, right? Just some different work orders here in a gallery. And so if we choose repair roof like this, you can see I've got just a normal form over here to kind of look at the data. But say you want to ask for an update. What we can do is we can click here for ask an update. This does a pop-up. We can determine who do we want to send this notification to and what do we want to say? We'll say, buddy, be a good boy and fix the roof. And then we will say send. And now as soon as we send that, that triggers a flow. And so if we switch over to my actual phone, here we'll see look at that notification demo one, buddy, be a good boy and fix the roof. And if we click on that, that is going to open up Power Apps, take us directly to that app. And because I've configured this one with what's called deep linking, it even takes us straight to that specific work order. All right, so all of that is configured by us. That notification demo one, that was the name of our application wondering, so we could change what had shown up up there as well, right? So there you go, pretty cool little feature here. Notice a couple things here. I did not have the app, Power Apps already opened, so that got launched for me. I did not have this app open, so it fell in the app, and then it went there, so it did all of that for us. The only caveat here is that I have to have had the Power Apps app installed on my phone and not only installed, but I need to have logged into it once so that it was, you know, authenticated. But the first time I did this, I had never used this app on this phone and it still opened straight up to it. So you don't have to have used the app, just the Power Apps app. All right, so you want to see how we built it? Let's just get back on my desktop. If we want, let's take a quick look at this app. Now, I'm, this app is available. You can download this working app as a solution if you're one of my YouTube library subscribers over at training.powerapps91.com. But if not, it's okay. You can build it yourself. But so really this one is it's just kind of two screens. It's a welcome screen. We've got a gallery here. And so when we click on one of these options, you can see that we are setting var record to this item. So we're creating a variable that has the record you chose. That's why when we click on like work order three, paint exterior walls here, boop, we go over here and it's got work order three open because this on this screen, what we've got is we've got a form control and then the form is set to a item property, which is that var record. That's a key configuration change, right? You might have gallery.selected here, but you need this setup if you want to do what we call deep linking. And so deep linking is where we were able to route them all the way here. Deep linking is not required as part of notifications, but a lot of times we find that when you're doing notifications, it's not just go look at the app. It is go look at the specific record. So you're going to want to do deep linking. Now, the way that deep linking works is if we go here to the app object and you go to the on start property here, we're passing a parameter. So we're gonna have to look at how we do that in a minute. But we're passing a parameter and we're pulling that out. And if it's not blank, we're doing a lookup to set var record to be the work order that they passed in the parameter here. And then if var record doesn't come back as blank, so we found the work order, then we're going to send them, navigate them to detail screen. Now I'll put a link up there to a video that will walk you through in details how deep linking works. This video is not about deep linking, but since I had it here, I wanted you to see how that works. Okay, on the flow side, right? Because if we look at the, if we had asked for update, so here we're sending, we're really just running a flow. So the flow, if we go over here, what we've got is we've got a edit. It's a very simple flow. So Power Apps V2 trigger, and we're just asking the app for the message. So what did you want to send? Who do you want to send it to? And then the work order ID, that primary key, right? This one was just for that deep linking stuff to work. And then we are doing the send push, 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 easy for me to say, notification V2 option here. Um, and then we've just kind of configured this to do fill in the blanks what we want here. So we're going to build one of these in just a second. I want you to see how this one in particular worked. Now, I will throw a caveat at you that I have found that this particular action does not work in the new Flow Studio. It gives you these object object errors. So you want to make sure you're in the old flow creating experience when you do it. All right, so let's build a power app and do it ourselves, right? So back over here, what we can do is we're just giving an app name of my notify app, right? Very complicated. We'll make it a phone app and we'll say create. All right, so over here, really, we want to just make this as simple and straightforward as possible. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we'll just insert ourselves a nice text input here and we'll throw a label on top of this 
and we're just going to rename this one to be input message, right? Because this is where we want to tell them what we want to send, right? Change this to say message. All right, we'll add another one of these, another label. We'll call this one uh, notify who, and then we will insert ourselves another text input. And if you want to get their email addresses some other way, right? Like with a drop down or something like that, doesn't matter, right? We just need their email address. We don't care how we get there. We'll change this one to default to like that. That way I don't have to keep typing it in. And we will rename this to input email. There you go. And then uh, a little bit later, we'll put this one down here. Um, and so this would be our uh, parameter, right? Just so we can see what that looks like. So, but we don't have that set up yet. So it sits for now. Okay. So yeah, very simple app. Once again, you saw the fancy version. This is just so you can see the mechanics. So let's make sure we do a save real quick. And then now we're going to create the flow to do what we want. So we're going to click over here on Power Automate. We we'll say create a new flow, create from blank. So the nice thing is this launches the old Power Apps or uh, Power Automate Studio, which it works in. And so here we need to create the inputs, right? So add an input, text, and we're going to first call this first one uh, my message. We'll add another input. We'll call this one my notify. And then the last one, text, and we're going to do my param, right? It always makes me think of uh, chicken parmesan. I don't know why that's, but right, param, param, I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm simple. Okay, so there you go, three inputs, right? New step, the flow only has to have one. Now this one is a little tricky to find. So what you're gonna have to do here is you're gonna search for power app to a space notification V2. Now, even though I've spelled it exact, it will not show up in the first layer here. But if you hit the drop down, if you look, it's down here. If you hover power apps notification V2, notice the two. Cause if you look over here, look, there is the old one, the V1 version or the no, no version one. You don't want that one. It has different setups, different configuration. We're not messing with it. All right, so we want the V2, so choose that. Now you can choose the action for that, and here you go. Now the first thing you need to set up is what mobile app do you want this to open with? There's three choices, field service, power apps, or sales. So field service and sales are Dynamics apps for launching things, so this could actually be used with Dynamics if you're one of those people. For us, we're doing power apps, canvas apps, so we wanna launch the power apps app. So we're gonna choose that. So now you've told it what app to launch on the phone, now what you want to do is tell it which app within there you want. So if we hit the drop down here, you should be able to find your uh, one use creator, right? My notify app. You have to wire this up so it knows what app to click into when they choose your notification. There you go. All right, so so far so easy. For the recipients. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna do my notify, right? So that's what goes in here. Now, if you hit this little text thing, you're gonna see that in reality, it is wrapped in square brackets. What do we know that means in JSON? It's a table, an array. So if you wanted to send it to multiple people, you would just separate them by semicolon. So it'd be Shane at PowerApps91.com, semicolon, Buddy at PowerApps91.com. Now we'd send two different notifications. If you put this in here like that, it's gonna handle that for you. And on the Power App side, you would just make sure you sent over the right things, right? For the message, once again, we've got our dear my message. And then open app, right? Whether to open or not the app when the user taps on the push notification. Obviously you sent them a notification because you want them to do something in Power Apps. So we want that to open. So I can't imagine why you wouldn't choose yes here, but maybe you would. Notice that the parameters is optional. So if you're doing the deep linking, like the example we showed before, you would put the parameter here. If you're not, you wouldn't. So, but in the interest of being complete, I'm gonna show you how this would work. And the reason I want you to see this is because this is a little bit goofy. All right, it's gotta be proper JSON. So we do something like this, we'd say curly bracket, that whatever you wanna name the parameter. So I'm gonna name the parameter cow, right? Just to show you, it can be literally anything. A colon, and so then right here, what you wanna put in is then the dynamic content of my param, and then you're going to close that in curly brackets, okay? So that is what this is going to look like. I do believe I wanna put this in double quotes even. I forgot that part, I think that's right. If not, well, we'll fix it, okay? So there you go. This is what your flow needs to look like. This is all your flow needs to do. We'll go over here, we'll call this my notify flow video, just in case I used that name before, and then we will hit save. All right, it's done saving. It's kicking me back over the Power App. It's loading that flow into the app. There it is. And so now we just need a button to do the thing, right? So we're gonna need a button down here. We'll grab this button and we'll say, hey button, what do I want you to do? On select, 
I want you to what? I want you to my notify flow video run. And so then first we want the my message. And so that would be input message dot text. Then it wants the uh, input notify. Oh, I did input in email dot text. And then for the, the parameter, I didn't set up an input for the parameter. So we're just going to set the input to be, you know, brown, right? Because cows are brown sometimes like so and so. Okay, so that is all set up. Now I want to, before we run this though, because we want to make sure that we're kind of getting it all in one fail swoop, we need to set it up to extract that parameter. So we're gonna go back up here to app. We're gonna go here to on start. And we're gonna say, hey, I want you to set var param to be, we're gonna use the param function. And then here, this is where you put in cow, right? If you did something other than cow, you would put in something else, right? But I, once again, I made it absurd so that you would see it. But this will extract from the notification that parameter. And so that will get brown, which we just said we'd pass. So now if we go down here, we can just say, hey, you, I want you to show that variable var param. Remember, if like this deep linking stuff is you're like, whoa, that was really fast. Go watch that deep linking video I linked to earlier because that's going to walk you through how all this works. But I think that's everything we need to do. So what we want to do at this point is we want to publish our app. So we're going to publish this out. Yes, we want to publish this version. And now that we've given a second to publish, we'll hit play. So here we are on here. I'm going to grab my phone as well and clear out all my other notifications so we don't see those. But we're going to set my phone to start recording. All right, my phone's ready. Let's press the button. Boop. And what we should see is look at that. My notify app text input, right? So my notify app, name the app, text input is the message we put. It was sent to me because I told it to go. And if I click on it, it should launch the app. The app just got created, right? So we know the app was never on my phone before this, but look at that. Text input, boom, boom, and param brown. So we know it pulled out. Victory. Look at that. First try. I would not have guessed I would have gotten that right. Okay. But that's it. It's that straightforward, right? It's really just about the flow and getting all these pieces over here in the flow to do what you want them to do, right? So send your inputs. Remember the parameter option is not required and then send your notification. Also, like right now we're triggering it from Power Apps to send them to Power Apps. Like the one customer we set this up for, they just have a flow that runs every morning at 8 a.m. and reminds people to sign in for the day. Or maybe you have it run and check to see, are there any past due approvals? And you just notify them, right? The send post notification doesn't have to be triggered by Power Apps you could be triggering it from your flow a different way. So whatever way, you know, whatever point you want to get someone's attention, send them into your Power App, this will work for you. Now, the other thing to keep in mind as we look at that is that it is possible, like if you come over here to data and you said add data and you search for notifications, right? There is the Power Apps V2 notification. So I could add this to the app and just kick out flow altogether, you're thinking, right? I spent like an hour trying to get it to work far as I can tell, there is no way to send notifications from Power Apps to Power Apps without flow in the middle. Like that, that connector, it adds, but I can't for the life of me get the syntax right. So if you figured it out, you leave me a comment below and you show me how smart you are. I can do it with the V1. I don't want the V1's logic, right? You can go ask ChatGPT. I did that and ChatGPT kept saying, here's how you do it. It was wrong. It was showing me the V1 way. The V2, as far as I can tell, just doesn't work, no matter what blog posts from people say, okay? So there is that. Yeah. And so questions, comments, leave them below. I'm up for all this. All right. Let me know what you got, what ways you're using this. I'm very interested. You know, we've only got a couple customers doing it, but I, I don't know somebody posted the other day and say, like, oh, that'd be a good little video for you guys. So that's why we're here today with this. And if we can help you with your projects, right? We've got hundreds, thousands, millions of customers. Love to add you to that list. If there's anything we can do for you on the consulting side, the training side, even the new AI stuff. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.